Now let's look at stage three, which is the cracked elastic section behavior. And this is probably the condition of most reinforced concrete structures that are in operation right now. They might be cracked in tension. You might not even be able to see the cracks. All the materials are still in their linear elastic region. And as the, the name suggests, the strain definition, again, is that the strain in tension is greater than the rupture tensile strain of concrete, which says that it's cracked. And our materials, again, are still remaining in their linear elastic region so that my steel has not yielded and my concrete in the at the extreme compression fiber is still within the proportional limit now because our cross section has cracked in tension and that crack has propagated up to the neutral axis our strain profile may be good but our stress profile is not valid the way that we have it drawn out right now because there is no concrete below the neutral axis to take any load or stress. I'm going to replace that with a dotted line. And the only material here to provide the couple for the, for the moment or for the tensile force is the steel. And we can still relate the steel stress to the general linear portion of the stress profile of the concrete by the modular ratio, which suggests because, again, the materials are elastic, our analysis approach can still use the transformed area method. But the big difference now is you cannot ignore the steel. So to locate the neutral axis depth, CNA, you can use the transformed area method where you convert the steel to an equivalent area of concrete and then complete your analysis by finding a geometric cent like the centroid and, and then you know the moment of inertia and applying the flexure formula. Or you can apply equilibrium, more specifically force equilibrium, where you would take the resultant of the compression force in concrete and because your you know your concrete and tension is cracked you would take the resultant of the tension force in steel and set them equal to each other and you'd be able to solve for CNA the depth of the neutral axis then you would calculate for moments or stresses using the flexure formula or moment equilibrium about a point so you could actually solve for this moment by taking moments about this point or where the compression force resultant is to calculate this distance here because this would have a centroid y bar or the force resultant would have some distance here and this distance which we'll call the arm would just be z which is d minus y bar and then you can sum moments about this point and solve for this m applied that's associated with the strain or you can use this moment equilibrium equation to go all the way back to stresses and strains. It's up to you. Again, the way you analyze it may depend on whether you're given a moment and you need to calculate stresses and strains, or if you're given a stress or a strain, and then you need to calculate moments.